All right, so we're going to do one more chain rule example, um, this time with, um, again, a function of two variables. All right, so z is a function of two variables. We can call this, if you like, this is our, our f of x, y in this case. All right, uh, so similar setup to last time, except now x and y, they're not functions of a single variable. They're functions of two variables, right? So x and y, they both depend on u and v. Um, so in this context, you can ask for, say, the partial derivative of z with respect to u and the partial derivative of z with respect to v. So let's do the u derivative first. And so it's going to look something like this, uh, dz dx dx du dz dy dy do you, right? So notice the only thing that really changes between here and here is, well, I mean, the, I'm, the variable I'm taking the derivative with respect to change from a t to a u, but also because there are now two variables, I need to use partial derivatives, so these, these regular d's become curly d's over here. Otherwise, it's the same idea, right? And so now you just fill things in. So dz dx, 3x squared y squared times, so we do dx du, 2u, okay, dz dy, 2x cubed y, and, and now we multiply by dy du, also 2u, okay. Now we can repeat the same thing for the, for the v derivative, so dz dv. So writing out the pattern, dz dx, that part stays the same, right? But now we do dx dv. All we're doing is changing the u to a v. dz dy dy dv. Okay, and now, these parts stay the same, right? These are still the same derivatives that they were before. So let's put them in, All right? Those are the same, so we leave them. What changes are these partial derivatives, right? These are now v derivatives. So up here, we have minus 2v, and then 2v, okay? And now you're done. Okay. I want to show you one other way that you can organize all of this. Um, you've seen it if you've looked at the, the later sections in the textbook, and I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, you, can, you can take this sort of Jacobian matrix approach, right? And so the idea here is if you, if you think about kind of collecting everything up um, so that you think of these two here, you think of these as two components, let's say of a single vector given by these over here, and you think about how everything kind of fits together, um, you might find that this, this looks a little bit like a matrix multiplication. Let me, let me think about how this goes. So, so what we want to do is is we're going to still say that z is equal to f of, of x, y, okay? But then what we're going to do is we're going to say that, uh, that x, y is now some function g of, of u, v, okay? And so what we're interested in doing is, is this. Uh, we're going to, so we're going to use this notation just to remind you. So if we say sort of capital D, and then some function say F, this is a matrix. And it's a matrix of partial derivatives. Okay? And you have to be a little bit careful about getting the sizes of these matrices right. Um, and this is something, once you've, if you've done this a few times, you kind of get the hang of which way things should go. Uh, but what we really have here is that, um, 
So, so Z, if you like, is now F of G of U V. This is, I think, the right way to think about it, right? Um, so Z through composition becomes a function of U and V because we're taking this function G, we're plugging it into the function F. All right, and it's, if you like, I think it was just a direct replacement. X, Y becomes G of U, V, okay? Um, so the chain rule in matrix notation says this. It says that uh, uh, DZ, if you want to think of it that way, and what DZ looks like is it looks like this. It looks like DZ, DU, DZ, DV. Um, hang on. No, I lied to you. It's not a column, it's a row. It's okay, that's an easy fix. I'm just thinking about how things fit together. So dz du, dz dv, okay. So chain rule says that you should be able to write this as um, df, okay. So df, and it should be evaluated at sort of g of uv, or, or maybe just to, to simplify notation, let's say xy. So it's df evaluated at xy, where in the back of our mind, xy is, is g of uv, times dg at uv, okay? There's chain rule. So what do these, what do these matrices look like? Well... The derivative of f, because f goes from r2 to r1, right? Two inputs, one output. It is a 1 by 2 matrix, and it looks like this. It's df dx, or should we say df? Let's say df dx. df dx, df dy. And this matrix here is, so it's dx du, um, dy, du, dx, dv, dy, dv, like so. Okay, um, or did I get it wrong? I got it wrong, didn't I? Uh, X's go across. This is the hard part. Is, is, it, is it the matrix you want or the transpose? And that's the part I always mess up. So we're going to fix it. It's instructive for you to watch me make these mistakes. Okay. So we want, this should be dy du down here. And this should be dx dv up there. Okay. So... Let's plug things in and see that this makes sense, okay? So this becomes, so df dx is uh, 3x squared y squared. df dy is, is 2x cubed y. And this matrix, so dx du, 2u, dx dv minus 2v. Uh, dy du is, is 2u dy dv is 2v. Okay, so now you, you do the matrix multiplication. You do the usual row times, uh, times column, and we see what we get. Uh, we're going to get, uh, let me kind of go up here. I have more room here than down there. So first row times first column, I get 3x squared y squared times to u plus 2x cubed y also times uh, 2u. In the first component, in the second component, I have 3x squared y squared times minus 2v. So this row times that column um, plus 2x cubed y times uh, 2v. I hope that shows up, that bracket. It might get cut off. I think we're okay. Um, 
right? And now if you kind of compare, so df dx is, is this part, df dy is, is that part, um, and you do get the same result that we had over here, right? Um, so I think it's, you know, in, in practice, you're probably going to just write out the patterns like this every time. But there are times where it's, it's useful to think about the chain rule in this, in this sense, that really, you know, there's this like matrix multiplication going on. And there will be a few cases where, again, you know, we probably won't use this a lot for computations, unless you find it easier to do it this way, in which case, please feel free to do it that way. Um, I'll enjoy seeing that if that's how you want to do your work. Uh, but um, where this will come in handy is when we talk about things like, uh, like tangents to curves. Uh, once we get to things like parametric surfaces, we want to understand how to construct tangent planes to, to parametric surfaces. And, and once we get into some of the vector calculus stuff, uh, this, this matrix point of view will sometimes come in handy. There will be a lot of times where sort of doing a matrix times vector calculation makes certain things fairly transparent. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that, um, but that'll be much later in the course.